Hi, today we are at Coventry Canal Basin. I'm Russ and this is Loz. We're comparing three different lens options on three bodies to test which one is the sharpest from the same starting position. So we're using the Z50, the Z6 Mark II and the Z7 Mark II. And the lenses we've chosen, we've got the really cheap 50 to 250, which is a brilliant kit lens, which you get with the Z50. Then we've gone to the other extreme. We've got the 70 to 200 F2.8 S lens with and without the 1.4 teleconverters. So we've basically got a lens combination there that's 10 times the cost of the 50 to 250, but we don't think the difference will be 10 times as much. That's what we're going to find out. We're going to be taken from the same exact positions, taking a picture of that signpost, and then in Lightroom we're going to compare at 100% or more to see which one is the sharpest. So you may think comparing these contrasting lenses to be a bit silly. We've got the 50 to 250 kit lens, which is relatively really cheap against the expensive 70 to 200 2.8. Surely there'll be a massive difference in quality, you think, wouldn't you? So we also think it's interesting putting the 50 to 250 DX lens on the top of the range Z7 Mark II, which you might think is mad, but we just want to find out whether it is or not. And equally, the 70 to 200 on the Z50 to see, for that extra reach, to see what the quality difference will be. Indeed. Good. So here's the 70 to 200 versus the 70 to 200 with the 1.4, both on the Z7. Obviously, the 1.4 has a closer starting focal range. So let's crop in and see what we can see. Obviously, I'll have to crop in further with the 70 to 200 to match the same crop distance. Now at this percentage, at 321%, the native lens is actually doing really well. The 1.4 is slightly sharper, I would say, it has a not much in it, considering it's a 1.4 teleconverter on top of the native lens. There isn't much difference at all comparing the two. Let's go even closer, see what we can see. There's hardly anything in it, which is surprising because the native lens is cropping in 300%, whereas the teleconverter isn't cropping in so far, but they actually match very similarly. Now let's look at the 50 to 250 versus the Nikon 70 to 200. So obviously the cropping starting distance is a lot different with the 50 to 250 because it's on a full frame body. It's 375 maximum focal length. Let's have a crop in, see what we can see. Okay, so yeah, you can tell the difference because of the natural reach of the DX lens. It has a great advantage. So it's zoomed into 264%, whereas the native lens is, to match that, we have to go at 326%. It still holds quite well. I would say the 250 edges it. Let's have a look at the lower edge to see the decay. Yeah, you can see the 250 lens has a sharper, better image quality there. But again, 7200 cropping in so far has done quite well. Yeah, you can see there isn't much difference, um, but I would say the 250 lens is a lot cheaper, obviously, and it's a DX lens, but it holds up well. Two fifty versus the uh, teleconverter with the seventy to two hundred. So now you can see. I would say the one point four teleconverter has the better quality here. There's not much in it again, and we are cropped in nearly three hundred percent on both of them. But I would say the teleconverter just edges it with the seventy to two hundred. But again, there's not much in it. You know, the, the comparing the two costs there of the lenses. Let's look at the lower edge. Yeah, you can see there the 1.4 off center has a much better quality image on the lower end. So 
So let's look at the Z6. Obviously it has the disadvantage because it doesn't have the high megapixel of the Z7 and it doesn't have the natural crop sensor of the Z50. But let's compare them anyway. And yep, there's not much too much difference. Oh, again, we are zoomed in at nearly 300% on both of them. And the Z7 should win here. And yeah, it does. It's a much clearer, detailed image there, much fuller dynamic range. Look at the top end. Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, the Z6 is doing well. I think it outperforms more than you think it would compared to the Z7 on this image. But yeah, the Z7 has the edge on that one. But we are zoomed in at over 300% now. Yeah, let's compare the two native lenses, 7200 on the Z6 and the Z7. And again, the Z7 should have the advantage because of the megapixels. So you can crop in more. Not too much in it, but yeah, you can see the crispness of that edge there isn't there with the Z6 image. So let's compare the Z50 with the Z7 using the 50 to 250. So obviously the Z7 is cropped. So the 250 on the Z7 is 375. Okay, so here we go. The edges of they look pretty much the same. Using the same lens, different bodies, Z7 versus Z50, they look almost identical when cropped in at 250%. Let's have a look at the top. Yeah, I would say the Z7 is slightly softer on this image slightly but we are zoomed in over 200 percent so the z50 is really outperforming here obviously it has the natural reach of the crop sensor but versus the megapixels of the z7 being able to crop in more it's very similar so let's look at the native lens 70 to 200 on both the Z7 and the Z50. And ooh, very similar. Again, we've cropped in 250%. There's hardly any difference there, I would say. Maybe a bit sharper on the Z7 on that dent in the corner. Not much in it, but I would say the Z7 wins on this one with the native 70 to 200. But again, not much in it. We're going nearly close to 300% crop here. Let's have a look with the teleconverter, both the Z7 and the Z50. And because of the, the crop sensor of the Z50, it does look a bit better of an image. Because of the crop sensor of the Z50, it does look a bit better with the image sharpness. Not much in it. Again, we have zoomed in 250%, 270% respectively. I would say the Z50 has the edge on the image quality here. So that was a real test, is to get the maximum reaching distance with the best sharpness. And so that's what we did. And I'm quite surprised by some of the results, I would say, that the at 100%, they are all the same. But then beyond that, it doesn't really notice any change until you go to about 200%. It looked to me at that point, really, the Z6 was sort of dropping out of the competition. Yeah. Because in DX mode, the Z7 is around about 20 megapixels. The Z50 is 20 or 21, anyway. And, but the Z6 in a DX crop mode drops down to 10 megapixels. And that's why, particularly with the 50 to 250 lens on either of those, the Z50 and the Z7. Yeah, and that's the kind of the results we've seen. If we're using the 50 to 250 and the 70 to 200 with or without the converter. The results are very similar. You know, you're, you're kind of searching around trying to find the edge sharpness and depth. But effectively, they look. So why would you then spend, which you have done, spent three grand on the Z7 II body, three grand on the 70 to 200 with a 1.4 teleconverter, making a total of six grand, 
as opposed to going out and buying said 50 for around about a grand, you get the 50 to 250 thrown in and the bonus of the 16 to 50. So you've got six grand plays, probably 1100 quid, six yeah. times. So you're spending six times the amount to get more or less the same results. So why are you doing, this, why are you doing this it? Objective. If you're doing wildlife, let's say, without a dedicated wildlife lens, you're better off getting a Z50, literally in your pocket. With the 50 to 250 lens on it. But the results are effectively the yeah. same and you're saving. I've, I've got, I must admit, and, and that's right, you can't get away from that, I don't think, from, our, from what we've done in that, in that test anyway. The 70 to 200 f2.8 is an absolutely, it's probably my favourite lens out of all of them because stick that on the, the Z62 at f2.8, it's just beautiful. It's creamy, it's beautiful bokeh, lovely shallow depth of field. So you're right, the 70 to 200 2.8 is gorgeous and it is worth investment, but for, for this objective, for, this yeah, really, for, this. for maximum sort of reach, because we, we, the, the, the trouble with the Z range at the moment is lacking some really long focal lengths, isn't it? We've both been looking at the sort of the F mount 200 to 500, but we'd rather sort of hang up. So we've stayed away from the 200 to 500, but by doing that, we've, we've been trying to find, well, how far can we get using Z, Z mount glass, basically, um, for, for distance? And it really comes down to that 50 to 250, um, at, which is 375 millimeter, uh, full frame equivalent is 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 marvellous, yeah. absolutely yeah. brilliant, and it's smaller and lighter as well, yeah. which is a bonus. Well, even if you use the Z50 with the expensive glass, it's still yeah. better. So the Z50 wins on every front. Yes, yeah. for for that particular challenge that we set ourselves to do. Yes. So we we're also interested to see the difference with a new teleconverter 1.4. Some reviews we've seen have showed it you don't lose any quality, but in our experience, we've done a few tests and we. I haven't been that impressed with really, it, have you? No, it's, I've been a little bit disappointed in a way, really. I mean, it's a lovely piece of equipment, but I was a little bit disappointed that comparing that to the 70 to 200 without it and cropping the, the 70 to 200 without it more to match the same sort of framing that you get with the teleconverter, really, there is no, as far as we could see anyway, there's no increase of quality or, or sharpness by using the teleconverter, even though you're cropping in less. So, uh, I mean, from my, I was quite surprised how much I could crop in with the native 70 to 200, which you can't do. Once you put the teleconverter on, you can't crop maybe half as much, but you can crop in a lot more mm. natively. So therefore it's kind of balanced out a bit. I know the, the whole theory of you've got more megapixels, but because the sensors are so good anyway, I don't really see much difference. No. What's the point? <laughs> Sadly, I really wanted there to be a point. So we might be proved wrong when we, we carry on. I mean, obviously we've, we've got it, we'll carry on using it, but at the moment there's been no massive benefit shown. But again, I would challenge you, it's 50% increase in the cost, because the Z62 is about two grand, the Z72 is about three, is 50% extra, an extra grand worth it for the extra cropping ability. It wasn't, that ability wasn't as great as I thought it would be. No, um, as I was really keen to get the Z7 Mark II. Because you come from a D850. Coming from a D850, I love cropping in, I love the flexibility, the, the image dynamics, everything is beautiful on the D850, so I'll, I'll naturally go to the Z7. But from my experience, the Z6 Mark II is almost as good, and if not better in some ways, like in low light. Yeah. So the, all you're paying for with the Z7, and this is probably for another video, is the extra cropability, which the Z6 can do wonderfully on its own. Mm. The Z7 and the Z50 were comparable, but then you might as well just get a Z50. <laughs> <laughs> so it loses on both fronts there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The cost and effectiveness. So we hope this is helpful. We, we've found it quite interesting to do ourselves. I look forward to any comments anybody leaves in the if anybody watches the video um, coming down the line in the future we may well compare the Z7 with a Leica Q2 which has a similar 47 megapixel sensor so look out for that.